Stampin' Storage presents Crafted Spaces. In this exclusive video series, we will take you inside beautiful studios from across the United States. First, you'll get expert advice for improving your craft area and designing your own dream studio. Later in the series, we'll take you on guided tours of the rooms we visited that were definitely crafted spaces. Ever tried to craft in a dimly lit room? Or where you can't find an outlet? A great studio won't do you much good if you can't see your projects. We'll focus on how important it is for you to have great lighting, as well as access to plenty of electrical outlets in your craft space. These are both necessary in order to have functional craft rooms. For a crafter, lighting is very important. To see the true um, quality of your color, you need to have good lighting. And natural lighting is best. And so if you have windows or you're thinking about doing a room, such as a crafting room, putting it on the perimeter where you could get natural lighting is important. Lighting is really critical. We want bright light. We don't want a lot of shadowing. As a matter of fact, one of the mistakes I first made was not getting strong lighting. And I found I had a lot of shadowing that was affecting how well I could see what I was working on. I wanted bright light. So I ended up with commercial grade LED under cabinet tape lighting. And it works like a champ. It eliminated that shadowing and it allowed me to really see what I'm working on. Colors were going to be true and I could see, you know, line things up well. You really need great lighting. It's something that I would strongly suggest you get as good of a product as your budget will allow. The other major role that Narissa played was with respect to lighting. This space was completely unfinished and it looked like a little mini dungeon. It may seem like storage was the first thing that we talked about, but it was really about lighting. Where I wanted to have um, to, to showcase lighting, um, we've done quite a bit down here with different types of lighting and Narissa has been integral to that. But if you do not have that, uh, if you're not that fortunate to have that access to um, windows, let's look at how we can use artificial lighting to create that. So there's three levels of lighting. You have your accent lighting, you have your general lighting, and you have your task lighting. The three different types of lighting are accent, general, and task. We'll start by exploring accent lighting. So your accent lighting, so you put over something special like an island or, or where you're going to be working a lot. In this particular room, I have a linear chandelier which um, I think is a nice little special touch um, that just, for me, adds a smile to, to, to the overall usage of the space. I also suggest you do above cabinet lighting. She has about 12 inch space above. Maybe put some uh, over cabinet lighting to give kind of an ambiance and you know, a soothing effect in your, in your studio. Um, in special spaces like at your computers or your accentuated pieces of artwork, you look at accent lights like down lights or wall washes. To summarize, accent lighting is drawing attention to special areas of your studio or adding a dramatic effect. On to general lighting. You have to have enough light to do your project successfully and be able to see and make it comfortable. So can lighting your ceiling is really good. General lighting lights up the room and makes it feel comfortable, but usually is not enough light to work by. That's where task lighting comes in. But task lighting is truly the critical element, allowing me to see what my hands were doing as, la as well as the products that I'm working on. So colors are true, I can see things that are bright and crisp, I can line things up, you know how difficult it can be to line things up. So great task lighting is important as well as lighting from up above. A lot of the times in a small area, if you don't have that, I always use a little art lamp that you can plug in and you can go right over your work surface so it gets right into you know, what you're working on mm -hmm. so you can see it. It's not good to be cutting things and and, and without the right kind of light. I prefer LED lighting. It is not as hot as like halogen lighting. It is um, very efficient 
it's a little more expensive than most lighting, but it lasts a long, long time and you won't have to replace it. Let's see how Keisha brought these three elements of lighting together in her studio. We have recessed lighting to, you know, to ensure that we have even coverage throughout the room. We have accent lighting to, you know, light up the room in a visually pleasing way. Um, we have task lighting that is over the desk. Um, we, we were very much focused on illuminating the place that it doesn't, so that it didn't feel like a basement. That's, that was the whole point that you walked down here and it just felt like another level of a house. You weren't thinking, I'm in the middle of a basement. Mackenzie learned the hard way about the importance of good lighting, and she had to make some changes in her new space. What I learned from my old studio was that I needed more lighting and I needed to be able to manipulate the lighting. Um, there's just certain times of the day where you need more lighting than others. You know, from early morning to mid-afternoon, I can use the natural light as much as I want. But then into the early evening, uh, I need to flip on, you know, the, the decorative lighting, and that helps. But then really late at night when I come down here after my daughter's asleep, I need all my lighting. And for that, I use um, the recessed lighting and under-counter lighting. Um, and the under-counter lighting is really great too when I'm wanting to photograph my projects because it just, it's so bright, it's, it's white light, and it really showcases the cards or um, whatever it may be that I've finished and I just want to showcase. So you've created a plan for accent, general, and task lighting. Now, spend some time thinking about how to control those lights. Great lighting can quickly become a nuisance if it's inconvenient to use. When you come into the room, you should have switches that turn on the main lights, and you can also have the switches there that turn the under cabinet lights on, but you can also have those underneath the cabinet here so you can switch them on when you're working in your workspace. Under cabinet lighting is very important so that it lights up your workspace. So when it came to deciding where to put the light switches, I knew I wanted it to be convenient. Uh, for example, I, after I finish a card, I just want to, you know, put it underneath the cabinet, flip on the switch, and have it illuminate where I need it. And then I can just turn it off and save that electricity. And when I'm leaving the room, I turn off the switches for the overhead lighting, and um, it just seems to flow and work well that way. There's also great technology available that you can use to control your lighting with your smartphone or tablet. Now we have to start looking at how we're going to control those lights and that is very important because you want to be energy um, efficient, you want to be sustainable in designing any space. So um, for this crafting room we looked at putting everything wirelessly. So there's a switch to control your general lights, there is a switch to control your accent lights and there's a switch to control your cast lights. So whatever lights you need, you just control it by a switch. And for this project, we were able to do it where she can control it with her iPad. And she just turns off the zones that she wants within the room. And it gives her a lot of flexibility and it saves on her electricity bill. Don't take your electrical outlets for granted. Mackenzie learned about that in her old studio. The electrical wasn't very good. I would often have many things going at one time. My embroidery machine was going for Christmas presents and I was using my embossing gun to finish up a card and I was also trying to dry some paint on something I was painting. So the breaker blew and I had to run downstairs and it just, it really eats up a lot of time to have to stop what you're doing, come downstairs, flip the switch and then run back upstairs and try to remember where you need to start off again. Take the time to think about what you'll be plugging in and where you'll want to use it. And work with your electrician to make sure you'll have enough circuits to run all of your equipment. When we were planning for the electrical side of things, I wanted to have the ability to plug in all of my different things at the same time, have them sitting out on the counter and have them working. One thing you should keep in mind when you're planning for electrical is to make sure you have plenty of outlets. It's not a matter of needing to have all of them fired up at one time, but if I want to use, for example, my heat tool at any spot within my crafting space, I want to make sure that I have easy access to that lighting. 
I like to sometimes have the television on or a program running in the background, so I wanted to make sure that I allowed for electrical as well as cable in one spot so that I could do that. I like to run my jam box and listen to my Pandora music, so I want to be sure that I have a spot where I can set that up and listen to music as well. So I think it's important to keep that in mind. And as I was laying things out, I wanted to make sure that anything that would go up against the wall, for example, my modules from Stampin' Storage, weren't going to be covering up that lighting. I actually had to move one of my switches up a little bit because once I got that in place, I knew I had to change that and make sure it was accessible. Plan to hide the unsightly wires for things that will always be plugged in. Half on your desk area, I would put my electrical outlet below the countertop and drill a hole in the countertop, put a grommet on it, and have all my electrical wires hidden as much as possible. Make it easy to plug in the things you'll use occasionally. When we decided on outlet placement, we knew that we wanted to have it at the counter. It was easy to get to. I could just plug something in, unplug it, and put it away right away. Or leave something out and have it plugged in all the time. One of the things I recommend is having a strip outlet that you can put underneath your wall cabinet where you can have all your power tools or your electrical tools. Think about all the devices you currently have and leave room to expand for new things in the future. The next thing that we need to look at is, is there any new equipment that you foresee buying in the future? Because that will tell you how much electrical load you need to have within this space, how many outlets you're going to need. You don't want to put all the outlets on this on one circuit and then you find out, oh, I want to buy this piece of equipment and you don't have the capacity to handle your new equipment. So what did you think? Join in on the conversation on our social media channels, which are linked here on the screen. Check out the next episode where we spend some time talking about how you should consider the future as you plan the layout of your craft room. If you're new to the series, be sure to watch the previous episodes. Don't forget to subscribe to our blog so you can hear about the new episodes to come. Thank you for watching Crafted Spaces, presented by Stampin' Storage. Stampin' Storage. Organize your craft, unleash your creativity.